When asked to tell the story of discovery, it is much more complex than it leads on. It's not just a cut and dry timeline with an origin story that shares similarities with other modern day churches or supported church plants. Where a pastor has a grandiose vision to change the world one person at a time, one home at a time, one community at a time. They grow a launch team to 50 people, raise thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars through the support of other larger churches, organizations, and people. Grow to 100 people in the first year and are preparing to launch their third simulcast campus in the beginning of year three. There's nothing wrong about this. In fact, Pastor Tim outlined a similar plan in November of 2008. If you know the history of Discovery, you will know it looked a lot different. Discovery's mission started in the heart of one in 2008. Pastor Timothy O'Carroll, at the young age of 24 with no experience, no funding, no supporting church, and no idea, he had a change in his heart and a call in his life to do something radical, to start a church. The city of Fort Pierce is a city that graces headlines often. Listed number one as the most unchurched city in the U.S. by Barna Study Group in 2017. A place Pastor Tim did not know existed until he met a girl whose lifelong home was the Treasure Coast. I went on a mission to Jamaica, and that's where I met Tim. We fell on mission trip love. Shortly after we started dating, he moved to Fort Pierce, and he became the worship leader and children's pastor there. One day, he was called into the office for a meeting. So I was in his office and he went to another office uh, for the meeting. And when he came back, I asked him how it went. And he said, well, um, I have good news. And I said, what is that? And he said, oh, I was laid off. And my heart dropped and I was like, what do you mean you were laid off? He said, um, I, I was laid off and I said, how is that good news? And he said, well, because now we can do what I know God wants us to do. Two months went by and um, in those two months, I just really got along with the Lord and began, you know, just questioning, you know, are you sure you, you really want me to do this? Am, am I gifted enough to do this? Do I have enough experience enough to do this? I think I'm too young, Lord. I mean, I just question every, every question I could think of, I asked of the Lord and he just continued to respond with, I'm calling you to this. I even went to Colorado just to get away from, from, from this area and just to really pray and hear from the Lord. And it was there. It was in Colorado. Never forget opening up to uh, the text in Ephesians and the Lord just speaking uh, of what he was calling me to. And so began, you know, these, the conversations uh, with, with Audra and her support throughout the years uh, and even leading up to this has been incredible. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's a big risk. I mean, we're starting from scratch with nothing, with no one supporting, just, just really just fully trusting in the Lord. And I don't want to, I don't want to downplay that, but if we're honest, there's, there's times in all of our lives that, you know, we want the tangible and all we had in that moment and all we needed was the supernatural. In 2008, after Pastor Tim's return from a trip to the mountains in Colorado, after being laid off from his previous job as a kids and worship pastor and telling his wife Audra in his office on his last day not two weeks earlier, we finally get to do what we've been called to do. We are going to plant a church. I think Tim's passion for, like he had a real passion and a vision for helping the lost. And I think that's what, personally, that's what drew me to make that move because we were happy at Southside. <clears throat> we were, you know, serving and had a family there. And so when we decided to go, it was it was because we knew we could, his vision for helping lost people and helping them Reaching find them. Jesus. And, and, you know, I know somebody, somebody had that passion for me when I was lost. 
I think for me, one of the biggest things is, yeah, he's my son-in-law and I love him, but we know that what people see on Sunday morning is what he is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know? so That's it's what not, I was going to say. Was, I, I had the opportunity or the where he was my brother-in-law before he was my pastor. So it kind of gives you a different perspective on the things he does. And like she said, when it, the, the guy you see on the stage on Sunday morning is the same guy you'll see yeah. at the ball field or you know any sporting event, anything you might be at, he's the same no matter where he's yeah, at. Yeah, he doesn't put on a church face on Sundays. Yeah. And I think that's why it, it was easier for us to leave because we trusted his vision yeah. for what he wanted. Absolutely. He had a greater vision for not just another church, but for the Treasure Coast area in general. I mean, he, yeah. he just um, talked about it, and um, he was so eloquent when he talked about it because he just really, you could see the passion for, for lost people, mm-hmm. you know, and for us, that was the only thing that really drove us to say, okay, this is, this is it. A mission that we need to follow. And so the the eight people that helped launch Discovery Church, one at a time, approached and said, "If you're if you're going to do this, we're we're in, we're in." And uh, and so that's where Discovery Church began. been talking about the strategy. We want to create environments where people could discover an eternal relationship with God, lasting relationships with believers. We, we wanted to create environments where, where people could develop their God-given potential. Uh, and then we wanted to create environments where people would be deployed out into the world. And we're meeting on Sunday nights before we launched publicly. And I just, I just knew in my heart that we needed to take a step out on faith. And so I I told the, the, the core group that, that Sunday night, and we're just going to set a date to launch publicly. and It's going to be April 5th, 2009. And I'll never forget the look on many of their faces, you know, like I was crazy and, and rightfully so. But then uh, that next day, the principal at St. Lucie West K-8 school called and asked for, uh, for a meeting. Uh, we had been calling, we had knocked on doors, and doors just were closed like one after another. It was about 10 different places we had looked to launch publicly, and it was just no, 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 no. Uh, and then I made that, that statement, and, and we agreed together. We prayed for that, and, and the Lord provided that next day. And, uh, and so then we launched April 5th, 2009. Uh, but that was a defining moment uh, that, we, that we said we have to step out of faith, and, uh, and, and we did. to a friend's sign shop and uh, just really broke down that day and just told him how much I needed God, I needed church, I needed something in my life. He told me about Discovery, that his friend's church just launched. Tomorrow was going to be Easter Sunday and they'd love to join us. Well, about 20 minutes of talking with him, I went out to the car and told my wife and kids, I said, uh, we're going to church tomorrow. And they all thought I was crazy. But, uh, You know, it was a tough time that we were going through. That afternoon, I came back to pick up my truck and uh, Pastor Tim happened to be there. And I got to talk with him and it felt like I knew him forever. He just was uh, somebody that I was able to bond with quickly and confide in. And right there, he lifted me up and prayed for me uh, in that moment. The next day, we went to Discovery Church, Easter Sunday. Pastor Tim preached story of Matthew being uh, the tax collector and uh, follow me was the two words that I had to hear. Well, that day was the day that changed our lives forever. 
After the rent increased over 65%, the doors closed at St. Lucie West K-8 School. Dad opened a new door at Treasure Coast Christian Academy. At the Treasure Coast Christian Academy, Discovery grew to about 60 people on average on Sunday. Church grew close by serving alongside one another by setting up on Saturdays and through outreach. While at the Christian Academy, one family in particular joined us one Sunday that would end up playing a vital role in the life of Discovery Church. Um, We actually were invited um, a bunch of times, uh, and we finally actually accepted the invitation and started coming before Mike was um, going into basic training. We came and, you know, met Tim and Audra and you know everybody and really liked it and said oh we're gonna come back and didn't come back. Pastor Tim had a meeting at the Treasure Coast Christian Academy with the principal. The door was once again closed. We were searching for a new location in the midst of losing our current meeting place. And after searching for nearly six months, God revealed a new location, a permanent facility, King's Plaza on US-1. someone returned that we were not expecting. And so um, basic training happens. I'm done with the military. Uh, I, I, that portion of it, I get out and uh, I, I come back to the States and we start living life just like it was a, a, a normal day, like like nothing had changed. Um, and I started uh, getting back into some, some not so good things. There was just some drugs and some some things that that I was doing that that just wasn't wasn't good. And so, uh, flash forward here, uh, we continued on partying, doing drugs. Um, my wife eventually told me, "Hey, um, if you keep this up, then uh, we're not going to be married anymore." And so I had to make a choice. Um, I had to decide whether I was going to uh, pick my family or pick the uh, the high. For a year, this guy Mike, every day, um, he, he never stopped. He never stopped pursuing me. He never stopped caring for me. Even when I was a jerk, oh, and I was a big, big time jerk to him so many times, he never stopped uh, coming after me and, and just and pursuing me. 
I'll never forget, it was December 26, um, 2011. December 26, 2011. Um, I was reading a book. Me and my wife had just gotten a big fight. I'm sitting in the bed. I'm reading this book um, called Tim Tebow Through My Eyes. I'm a big, huge Tim Tebow fan. I just liked everything the guy stood for. And I just reached this breaking point and, uh, and this, this just emotional state just just came over me and, and I broke down into tears and and you know I, I decided that then and there that I was done um I was done trying to fight God um I was done trying to do my own thing um I I was really ready to to surrender uh to his will and, and what he would have for me so um man I hit my knees I really was ready to to take the next step. I was really ready to see what was next and what God really had for me because everything I was doing was was not working. I was failing in so many areas um, as a husband, as a father. That Sunday, I woke up and uh, I was excited. And so I, I got ready and I thought my wife would be excited too. And she wasn't. Um, and I couldn't understand why. And she didn't want to go to church. She thought it was just, it was going to be a clicky place. And, and I said, no, let's give this another shot. And, and she didn't want to have it. And so I ended up going the first Sunday um, in, in January, the first Sunday in January of 2012 by myself. I, I just remember breaking down. I remember just losing it. And I'm, I'm thinking, why am I in tears? What is going on? I'm a man. Men, men don't cry. What am I doing? And here I was just sloppy, messy, just putting my hands up for the first time, not even knowing what that was. And come to find out it was just, it was total surrender. And so for the next couple Sundays, um, I came. I came to Discovery. I brought my daughter and I came alone. Uh, and my wife wanted nothing to do with it. And, and I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. Um, and so I asked her, I said, why, why won't you come to church with me? She said, because this isn't you, this isn't real. This is just some fake front you're putting on and, uh, and, 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 and I'm not gonna have any part of it. And I'll never forget, it was the third Sunday, me and my daughter uh, had went uh, and, we're, and we're sitting there in the, in the, in the driveway and, and we were praying for her and I was crying and we're praying for her that God would change her heart. God would just do a work in her and, and, and show her that this was not just words. Um, and I think that's what God was really waiting on. He, he was waiting on it to be action and not just hollow words. Um, and, and he wanted to see that. And so uh, the next Sunday, reluctantly, she came. We got in a huge fight, but she came and uh, and man, we've been coming ever since. Uh, three months, well, actually two months in to go in. Uh, I believe it was early March, late February, early March of 2012. I actually had the opportunity to lead my daughter to Christ and explain to her what it was like to have a relationship. Um, this, this real life-changing relationship um, with, with, with our Creator and uh, and it was awesome. Um, I, I was able to baptize her, and uh, and still to, to to me that's that's one of the best moments of my life. I have it, the picture of that moment of me and Tim, uh, still looking like Guy Fieri, by the way, um, posted. It's 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 in a frame um, on my desk at home, and uh, it's one of my favorite moments. And uh, I always loved that. It wasn't Tim that baptized her. He said, no, you're the spiritual leader of your house. You need to baptize her. And so uh, I, I love that. I love that, that that's the direction that Discovery would go in, right? Um, Tim had told me when we first started meeting that, that Discovery existed to reach young, unchurched families, right? They wanted to lead people to be fully devoted followers of Christ. And that's where I was. We were a young unchurched family um, and I'm so thankful without Tim's heart and Tim's vision Mike's journey would look a lot different 
God sent him down a path. God sent him down a path that radically changed his life forever. Mike Goddard fully surrendered over to God in 2012 and later became our family pastor, in which he has had the opportunity to lead so many more to Christ. to over 100 people on average on a Sunday at the refuge, served the local community, partnered with other local expressions of the church, sent teams all over the world, and grew comfortable. I'd say the day we left a permanent location, I was just going to say that, right? I mean, it was hard to go back to the breakup and sit down, but Tim said, we're going to go mobile again, and we were like... (laughs) <laughs> no such thing as getting comfortable but again I mean he yeah. had a vision and you know God I believe God just showed him that there's something greater and unless we got out of our comfort zone we couldn't reach it right? and that's, and that's exactly that it he doesn't want us getting in a comfort zone yeah. oh, no, we don't God. be comfortable <laughs> let's, so let's not be comfortable we had gotten yeah. so big at King's Plaza that we couldn't have got we couldn't have gotten any bigger there yeah, yeah. when we I heard a lie to you when he was saying Okay, we're going mobile again. I'm thinking, dude, you know how much work we put into this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, you yeah. guys did too. Don't act like yeah. you did. Yeah. And, oh, we put, and we put and we put work into trailers, night. right? Yeah. So yeah. I think it's you it just come like to night after night after night. Yeah. Yeah. One of those points where you you actually see where it's not about us; it's yeah. about yeah. the yeah. the yeah. mission, the goal. So it was January 2013. I was having lunch with a friend of mine and. 
we were talking about uh, how things were going with Discovery Church and and uh, words came out of my mouth that I thought would never come out of my mouth. I said, we are comfortable. We are comfortable. And as soon as those words came out of my mouth, I knew it was time for a new chapter in the life of Discovery Church. Uh, begin praying it through and out of nowhere, the same friend sent me a text a few days, a few weeks actually later. And he said, hey, can you use a truck and a trailer, 26 foot enclosed trailer? Uh, I said, exactly, yes, yes, exactly what we need uh, to be able to go back portable. Moving to Savannah Ridge Elementary School put us in a position to do more outreach and community-centered events because it had less overhead than the refuge. We left the refuge because we grew comfortable, we grew stagnant, we reached capacity, and one of the local expressions we co-leased the facility with closed. However, we reached new heights at Savannah Ridge Elementary School. More people have been baptized in the last five years than in the first five years. We've grown to nearly 150 on Sunday mornings. We're launching two worship experiences starting Easter of 2019. We plan on reaching more people than we ever have before. Actually, I, uh, I started attending church in sixth grade, and uh, Pastor Tim was the, the worship pastor at the church. From that time, we kind of went in, in different directions, and then Pastor Tim and, and their team started Discovery Church, and it was just always something that I knew that was happening. It was always something that in the back of my mind I knew that I wanted to be a part of. I just didn't know exactly how to do that at the time. Um, life brought me in a lot of different directions, and, and you know, I, I had some amazing opportunities to, to work in different ministries and tour and, and get that experience of, of worship and using technology to worship. And then um, I actually got my hair cut um, at Relentless Salon by Audra. And Audra invited me to come, uh, you know, come visit Discovery Church. And I had gotten married not long before. And so I went home and told my wife, you know, I really think uh, that, that we need to go to Discovery and just experience it and see it. And um, there's, a, there's a connection there's a connection that I had with Pastor Tim and Audra um, that dates all the way back before Discovery. And then going to Discovery for the first time, uh, it's like that connection, you know, never went away. It's that feeling uh, when I walked, it was like walking into their house. It was, it was very welcoming. It felt like I was walking into home and I felt like I walked into a place um, where people were chasing after this, this uh, relationship with Christ instead of religion. And so... I knew right away the first time I went that that was something that I wanted to be a part of. And then uh, what was really important to me as well with that was um, what can I do? Uh, what skill do I have or what, what uh, can I bring to the table uh, to help further God's kingdom through Discovery Church? In what ways can I invest in Discovery Church and, and what can I do? And, and so um, I own a company. Uh, JAH Audio Corp that started um, ultimately because we wanted to service churches and we wanted to um, see the kingdom grow. 
And um, it, was, it was the logical next step that the company would, would partner with Discovery Church and that we would be investing in Discovery Church and providing the assets and providing the equipment um, that we felt uh, that could be used to help further the church and ultimately grow the kingdom of God. And so uh, we poured into Discovery Church and uh, we made a lot, of, a lot of great changes and it's been awesome to see how receptive the church is to the changes we just, uh, again, chase after uh, this, this expansion of the kingdom of God. Being able to look back over this past 10 years, we've, we've experienced that. We've experienced people uh, feeling like this is a family. We've experienced the next generation being invested in and raised up. We, we've experienced people discovering who, who God is and developing their God-given potential, serving in strategic areas. And we've experienced people being deployed out into the world uh, and uh, it's just been a, an amazing 10 years, and I, I believe with everything in me that the best is yet to come.